We both created a mobile app for traveling healthcare professionals called MedVenture app. And it's both social as well as it has like a lot of resources to really empower every traveling healthcare professional. And I think a big reason why we've been um, pretty successful so far is that we're trying to bridge the different um, professions Ooh, together. I gotta go. I've been working, so them please don't hit my phone. I'm in my zone, bro. Just leave me alone. Was on the road, but I swear I'm coming home. Now the drinks on me, I think we need a toast. See, I did it for me. Now my old friends calling, told them nothing's for free. Told me time is money, dog. I swear I paid on my fees. I was starving for this day, now my fan they can't eat. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Cup of Nurses show with your hosts, Peter and Matt here. This is a podcast where we tackle current health news and hot nursing topics, one conversation at a time. If you find any value in this podcast or like it, enjoy it, please smash the five star, give us a like, share, share it with your friends and family. That's what motivates us. That's what grows us. An algorithm picks us up. And that's how we keep on rocking and creating this highly creative content. For anyone that's wondering, any announcements or anything related to Cup of Nurses, like show notes, check out cupofnurses.com. We have things on there such as blog posts and this hot merch such as me wearing this love shirt, Pete's wearing the coffee scrubs and rubber gloves. Love it. If you're more into consciousness and self-improvement, we also have the wearefrontlinewarriors.com. There's a ton of information there, blog posts every single week, so tune into that. Uh, if you want to know more about us, we also have a email flow that you can subscribe to, ton of information there, ton of cool YouTube uh, videos for the uh, YouTube if you're subscribed to like the vlogs that we have coming out, and then also the Pronto app, which is going to revolutionize and innovate healthcare for everyone in the healthcare industry. Coming really, really soon, working really hard, Q1 2022, fingers crossed. How you doing, Pete? I'm doing great. Two amazing guests for y'all today. We have Emily Chang and Ryan Cogdell. They are two seasoned travel nurses. They're also the co-founders of the MedVenture app. We talk about the state of the travel nursing. We talk about the travel nursing industry, a little bit about how they manage our time and switching between being a nurse and also managing a business and an app. And tune in, guys. Another good episode. Hey, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank you guys for being here. Can you give us a little background about yourselves and your nursing experience? Yeah, sure. Right, do you wanna go first? Do you want me to go? Okay. Um, so I'm M. I am a nurse of six years. I'm originally from New York. I've been a traveler for three and a half years, primarily in CVICU. I'm currently taking a break from the bedside for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, and I'm working in IV therapy and on MedVenture app. Hey everyone, my name's Ryan. I've been a nurse for 11 years. I've been traveling for going on nine years almost. Um, I do mostly step down, but I've done anything from uh, med surge, tele, OBS, uh, clinics, uh, IV therapy. Um, but yeah, I'm currently in, I'm based out of California and currently in Los Angeles. So I'm really curious because both of you uh, do IV therapy. So do you guys go to like people's homes and administrate it? Or do you have like a clinic or like a site where you got where people come in and get it? Yeah, so we all mobile. So basically we do... We are the hangover go-tos. So we go to people's houses that are hungover or that are sick. We do um, antibody therapy for COVID patients, um, anything like that. I did it actually when I was in Austin. Um, I don't do that anymore. I'm on assignment and step down, but M does it in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been cool. Like we go to people's homes, businesses, even sometimes hotels, like I've met people in parking lots before. It's been really random and really interesting experience. That's so cool. Do you guys also do like the vitamin C therapy as well? Yeah, we do do like, like one of our most popular ones here in Seattle right now because of COVID is like our super immune boost. So we give um, 10 grams of vitamin C in there in addition to like zinc, glutathione and uh, B12 and B complex. Okay. And since so y'all have been doing that for a while now, because I'm curious because one of our coworkers, uh, she was sick with like the flu or a cold or whatever. Um, and she got IV, the IV vitamin C therapy and she said that, that it works well. So have you guys noticed like the, the, does it work or is it just kind of like foo-foo? What do you guys think? I do follow up with, oh, go ahead. 
I follow up with my clients after I give it, and a lot of them do feel um, better afterwards, and they do recover faster. So I don't know if it's foo foo or what, but uh, they do have a positive response. I actually gave it to uh, one of our friends, Sierra, who you guys know, who had COVID, and she felt much better that, right after it and the next day. So it does work. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Because Matt, back in the day, he used to make liposomal vitamin C, like, um, like a couple of years ago. I made right? it with like an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner, mm -hmm. though. But I still like just uh, poured it into the bottle and took like shots of it. Yeah, this is this would be this would be before like the IV stuff became popular. This was like eight years ago, nine yeah. years ago, maybe maybe even ten. We were still shorties or not shorties, but we were younger for sure. Yeah, before the before the whole IV thing got like really popular. Yeah. And I know both of you guys did staff nursing at one point, especially after nursing school. So where was the transition for you guys or the breaking point to start traveling? Um, I started, well, I knew I wanted to be a travel nurse after like in my senior year of nursing school. I think I learned about it at like a conference or something. And then I was like, okay, that's the goal. I'm going to get my two years of experience and then dip. Um, I ended up getting two and a half years of experience just because I had switched units and I wanted to make sure I had good like CV experience to set me up for success. Um, but I always had the date. Like, I think it was like perfectly two and a half years to the date that I left. <laughs> and then I took a month long uh, trip to Thailand and then got myself together and moved all across from uh, New York. I went all the way across to California. I was like, go big, go home. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I started as a monitor tech at age 18 in the hospital and I met a travel nurse like one of my first weeks and he was explaining how cool his life was. I was like, well, I want that life. So I kind of went into, I was originally going to go be a doctor and I was like, well, I don't want to work that hard. I'm going to go to nursing school, um, which you actually work pretty hard, by the way. Um, but anyways, yeah, I went into nursing school, graduated, um, and then started after two years, started training CVICU, got through a breakup. And I'm like, do I really want to stay here for another year? And I was like, no, I just started traveling. Mm, That's cool. So what's like the hardest thing uh, for y'all that was for traveling? Was it like... Uh, going to a new location and just being by yourself or was like the onboarding process what was the most difficult thing for for y'all to to do before you actually went on the unit i think the hardest thing for me was like committing to do it like taking that first step i think that's the hardest thing for most people um and after you commit and then just like put your mind towards it it's pretty easy from there um i came from kind of a, a bougie hospital in fresno with no er we didn't get admits at night so I was kind of nervous about having an ER and doing admits and stuff, which was a, you know, it, it was rough, but uh, it's nothing you can't do for three months. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think um, leaving everything you know and love and like the safety and comfort of your home for the first time is definitely, you know, I was so excited, but I think like maybe a day or two before I was sitting with some of my best friends and I was like, I'm so excited, but I just started like bawling. I was like, wow, I'm actually leaving. Like I'm leaving for, I don't know how long. And I kind of knew I was going to be leaving for, for good, like that I was never going to live in New York again. Uh, but it's still, you know, you're taking on this new life now. Um, and for me, I had always worked nights and I took my first assignment in days and that was a shock to the system. I think honestly, that would be the only thing I would change is to have a little bit of days position uh, experience before I took that position. Cause it was just, I was not used to getting like so many admissions and discharges and um, it was kind of a very steep learning curve. But you know, again, like Ryan said, you just like figure it out. Right, that's interesting because Matt and I have worked night shift our whole life, and then our first day shift was was in our in our contract too, which was, like you said, I wish you had some like, experience, like staff experience on days because it was a little bit overwhelming. So what's like the? Because do you do nights, uh, Ryan, or do you do uh, days? Yeah, I do nights. This is my very first. This current assignment is my first day shift. Okay. I'm, oh, that's dying. Go. Yes. <laughs> so, it's a question for, for, for both of you, Emily. Um, what's the hardest thing that? What's the hardest part about transitioning from nights to days? And then for you as well, Ryan. What have you noticed so far? I think what's so overwhelming about days is like you can't get your stuff done without getting a thousand distractions. <laughs> I think that's the most frustrating thing is like, you just want to sit down and chart or like be with your patient, but like everyone's calling you or people need turns or the secretary's calling you. Like you're just pulled in a thousand directions or you're going on field trips um, to bring your patient to MRI or x-ray, whatever it is. And so uh, for me, it was mostly just like getting frustrated that I couldn't get my stuff done and feeling like I was always behind. Um, whereas for night shift, there's more of like a lull time in between like, you know, like your med passes and stuff. So 
Yeah, I'd say for me, it's it's the sleeping. I've been on nights since 18 since I started as a monitor tech. So it was really hard to transition into a day shift sleeper, um, which I'm still getting used to, to be honest. Uh, but also fucking food, tra- sorry, I don't know if I can cuss. Food trays, I hate food trays. <laughs> and then I hate the phone, I wanna throw it out the window. Um, but besides that, it's been a good transition for me. I'm, I'm much more awake and happier overall. Yeah, that's probably the biggest thing that we've noticed was that feeling like our sleeping was better and like our, our mood was a lot better because like night, night is, nights is cool. Like everyone's like chill, the staff is great because you could say it's not as busy on, on days or on nights compared to days. So you can actually talk to your coworkers a little bit more. So I feel like you get like a, it's a better unit cohesiveness on nights because you're not as busy, you could say, but like transitioning from nights to days, just the outside of the hospital lifestyle is so much improved. Like you feel like you get a lot of a lot more stuff done. Like you feel naturally better. Like I just felt so much better overall, right? Yeah, I just love the pace of night shift. That's my only thing where you do your thing, you come back, you pop an AirPod on, you, you know, you do something else, <laughs> do your other thing, do a bath. Like you have your own consistency and workflow and that's something that days doesn't offer. But, you know, just like you said, the body is mm. more important. Mm. What are some of your favorites, uh, favorite travel nursing assignments? Mm. I'll go first because I feel like Ryan has a, much longer list than I do. Um, but Oahu, um, we went a year ago, Ryan and I took a crisis contract together there. Um, and then I would say Seattle, Washington, I've like pretty much been here on and off for two and a half years. So I must really like it here. <laughs> I would say mine would be Guam. I did an assignment in Guam. It's just really refreshing. The patients all called you sir, and they're really respectful. Like sometimes we run out of pillows and be like, hey, I have this hold up blanket. They'd be like, okay, thank you for looking. Like in the States, if you don't have ginger ale, you get the cup thrown at you. You know what I mean? Like it's so different over there and they're just grateful for the care. So that was a really unique one. Um, And then my other two favorites are Maui and Denver. And I think it's mostly because of the travelers I've met Mm. there. So for Guam, do you still speak English uh, there? Like like people, (laughs) that's like, oh, that's that's my biggest concern is like, if you're traveling outside the US, like do I gotta learn a second language? Cause I'm, you know, it's kind of hard. Uh-huh. No, they do speak Chamorro, um, but almost like I would say like 95% speak English because it is a U.S. territory. So um, there's a lot of U.S. influence over there. Okay, that's good to know. It seems like both of you guys said Hawaii. So that's probably definitely a contract that has to be done. Mm-hmm. And it's something we wanted to do this year and it just completely slipped with um, everything that was happening mm-hmm. with restrictions and et cetera. Mm-hmm. So wh- yeah. why do you, sorry, why do you all, you all travel? Do you fi- travel for like financial purposes or do you travel because you want to explore the US and kind of gauge where you want to settle down or do you just do it for the experience? Um, I felt stagnant. Like I, again, I like born and raised in New York. I knew in my heart always that I was not like a diehard New Yorker. And so it is like my way to figure out like where I want to live long-term. But then also I just felt like I really wanted to go on this like, inner journey and growth. And I knew that like being around the people that had known me always, like I wasn't gonna have that opportunity. So I needed to like put myself in a really uncomfortable situation over and over again to be able to grow as much as it's like, you know, you resist it so much in the beginning and then you end up just like really, like I just love growth now. I'm like, okay, this sucks, but I know on the other side of this, I'm gonna grow so much and learn these things and I'm gonna be better for it. Yeah, I, I mostly did it for the experience and I've always went to the hot spots so the pay was super low. Like when I first went to Maui, I was only making twelve fifty a week. Like that's unheard of now. Um, but uh, the past two that I've done, I've done it for the money. I mean, because the money's so good right now, but mostly experience for me. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever see yourself like settling down somewhere? Is there a one specific location you just like if if this were to be after all my travel nursing contract, that's where I would go? I always say that's the curse of traveling is like finding somewhere to settle. The more I travel, the more I don't want to settle. So at least for me, I have no idea where I want to settle. Mm -hmm. I really don't like the word settle because it feels like this trap. (laughs) And I feel like it's such a trigger word for all travelers. So I like to say like planting roots. Um, and I, I always say like home base too. I'm like, yeah, I'm based out of here, but I can like leave anytime that like, psychologically makes you feel a lot better (laughs) but uh i've been pretty much in seattle and i do think i'm gonna like make it a home base just because i need a little bit more stability with everything that we're doing with our business but i am getting really jealous of like other people who get to like take assignments and travel and stuff i do miss that but i know i'll get back to it eventually yeah i like how you said that i'm 
planting roots and you taught you were talking about growth and all that because if you think about it in life there's two things that are only guaranteed one is change and that's through growth and experience and cultivating yourself and the second one is death that's that's certain for everybody you know (laughs) not 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 to bring this vibe down right Right, but you know (laughs) i think it's healthy to talk about death and like we face it every day right but how does that like remind you to live then like i think i think it's a great thing to think about 100 percent. even the patient experience is like it just humbles you and it makes you appreciate life and then it kind of gives you that energy to motivate to go do something because of the circumstances that we see patients in yeah it's, it's crazy like i feel like since we've been doing nursing for such a long time like nursing is almost like a motivator for me to like do other things in life because like we see people in the hospital and they're in a the hospital so like when you think about like for example, something that you should be doing or could be doing, it, it makes you more inclined to actually do it because like the other end of the stick is I could be in this hospital and in this room like this patient, you know? So like nursing in general, especially in the ICU, makes you more inclined to, to, to do certain things. So since you are both are avid travelers and are involved in the travel nursing industry, where do you guys think, think the future of travel nursing is going to go? Such a good question. I think We've seen a lot of changes in the industry, especially with COVID with like, I mean, there's at least three times as much uh, or as many travelers as there was before COVID. And I think because people have been really frustrated from how undervalued staff nurses are, they're like, well, obviously if I can get paid more than uh, what I'm getting paid as a staff, like why would I not go? Um, And I think people, once they get a taste of it, they're gonna stick around for a while. Um, But I'm sure we'll see a little bit of a drop off once the crazy rates um, start going down. Um, Cause I know people are definitely taking advantage of that to like pay off debt and go after like big expenses and stuff. But I do think we're gonna continue seeing people go into travel just cause um, of course with social media, you see so much of our lives and the highlights and stuff and why it's so awesome. So I personally think there's going to be more travelers now more than ever. Yeah, I think so too, because we were, we started traveling uh, pre pandemic and even with like not the, the highest rates or the best rates, we still did it for the experience. And either way, I feel like as a traveler, you're going to make more money, no matter if it's the height of the pandemic or, you know, post pandemic, you're still going to make more than the staff nurse, I feel like. So I think, like you said, that it's going to be like a little bit of a drop off for travel nurses after the pandemic. But I th- still think a lot of nurses just do it for the experience. I feel like nurses that do it for the financial purpose, they're a little bit older and kind of ready, ready to, um, what did you say with, with the roots? Emma? Planting. Yeah, they're ready to plant their roots somewhere compared to, you know, the younger nurses where aren't thinking about putting any seeds anywhere or, or, any, or anything like that. You know, so they're doing it more for the experience. And then I feel like the older people are doing it more for, for, for the money. And then they're going to kind of leave, but still the new nurses are, are, are going to come and still, uh, it's, it's going to still be, I feel like a, like a big industry, especially because man, I, we did, uh, we looked up some stats regarding nursing in general. And I think it was like from 2020 or was it 2019 that half a million nurses retired. So we were short a half mil- million nurses, but there was only 350,000 nurses ready to, to get out of school. So there was still like almost a 250,000 nurse shortage. shortage yeah. And now the pandemic came in 2020, 2021, and there's even a greater shortage. So I think it's a very, I think it's going to be a very lucrative field for, for, uh, for a while for, for nurses in general and all travel healthcare professionals. Yeah. yeah. So what about you, Ryan? Where do you, where do you see travel nursing in the future? I, I I echo everything that you guys are saying and I'm saying. I think also people are getting into traveling to stay away from hospital politics. They don't have to go to staff meetings anymore. Um, and then you can take as much time as you want off. Like that's the biggest draw for me. One of the biggest draws for me is I always do an assignment. I take a month off and go travel and then come back. So I, I think all of that and all is like so appetizing. Why wouldn't you do it? Right. Yeah. And now that we're doing it for a while, like I, I realize like as a staff job, you only get like X amount of off days you know, in, in a year, right? But as a travel nurse, like you dictate how much off days you want. So you could pick like a nice paying contract, you know, work your ass off for like three, three, three months, maybe six months, and then you could take a good good majority of the of the year off. So I think a lot of people are also gonna see value in that because in, like in a, in a corporate staff position, you could say at, at a hospital, they may, you know, allocate like maybe like a week or two, maybe three if you're lucky for you to, you know, have time off compared to travel nursing. Man, I've been taking our, our summers off these past couple of years and it's been amazing we don't have to ask anybody hey can we take this off we just know that if our finances are, are done correctly and are well off financially we could take you know two to three months off a year with no problem and it's amazing hashtag never going back to staff mm-hmm. and so we, we've been podcasting quite a bit and we had multiple guests on and the consensus is that tra or 
nurses in general make a great entrepreneurs. And I know you guys are growing in your, in your niche and everything. So how did you guys come to take on the entrepreneurial role and what you guys are currently doing? Um, you know, I think we saw a really big need in our industry and we are like so niche. And I really feel like, I mean, I'll give ourselves like a pat on the back, but I do think we're mastering it um, pretty well right now. But we both created a mobile app for traveling healthcare professionals called MedVenture app. And it's both social as well as it has like a lot of resources to really empower every traveling healthcare professional. And I think a big reason why we've been um, pretty successful so far is that we're trying to bridge the different um, professions together. Whereas I feel like travel nursing is so heavily dominated in the travel industry because there's so many of us, but then we forget about the therapists and the allied and, um, you know, they're all part of the healthcare team. We're all important, every single one of us. And I think what's really powerful in our app is that we're bringing us all together um, because we live this very similar lifestyle. We just do different things in the hospital, but even in the hospital, we are all in this common goal of helping out patients. So I have this um, fantasy that this relationship that we have outside hospital will translate into the hospital to have like better interprofessional relationships. I'm hoping um, that'll happen eventually. Yeah. And just to echo off what she said, um, we just like, usually when you start traveling, you guys, when you started, you knew each other's traveling, but if you go solo, you hope to meet somebody in orientation. Otherwise, you know, you might not meet anybody or you just meet someone on Facebook or Instagram. Um, so we kind of wanted to bridge that gap where you have that community before you even take your assignment, you can message people, you can plan to go to meetups in the city. Um, and we just kind of wanted that connection and community before you even get to your assignment to make it more, um, make you have a better assignment overall. Yeah, hundred percent. Like if you have a, a really, really good work life balance, then it shows on like your, your patient care. That's why it's important. Like travel nursing, it's, it's very heavy on the business aspect, but a lot of times we forget on like the social aspect, aspect of it. So not just the life inside a hospital and the life of your contract, but also the life outside your contract because most healthcare professionals, they work three days a week and they have all that time off. So it's also very important to, to them to utilize this, this time off because you gotta take care of yourself. I know there are some crazy travelers out there that work like six six days out of the week, which is, which is wild. They're, you know, they have a different purpose, purpose in life, but they still need to take, take care of themselves as well. And I feel like you guys are doing a, doing a great job with, with like molding travel nursing to be this like holistic kind of thing, not just you go and do your contract and, and you come out. Like you're making it a bit better and bigger experience because right now it's very heavy on just the industry and not so much on like the social aspect, which we, you, guys, you guys are doing very well. And it, it's amazing because we need something like that because there's, there's, there's two ends of that, of that stick for nurses and for travel like professionals in general. And sometimes I feel like it's harder to create relationships with in-hospital staff, especially working on the same unit. I don't know why that happens for me. So I love the fact that you can interact on an app and create that community outside and then interact maybe inside the hospital afterwards. Yeah, 100%. Because it's always like, it's always great when you could find some of the staff nurses to, you know, be friends with and, and go out and do things with. But it's, it's still not... Not, not the same because you're only there temporarily. So a lot of times I feel like it's easier to be a friend like, a, like another traveler. Like you were saying, Ryan, that if you're traveling alone, you know, you got to kind of hedge on hopefully finding someone that, that you could kind of collaborate with and hang out with that's also traveling. And then when you have an app like, like your app that's, allowed, that's allowing people to just, just um, get notifications of like who else is there traveling and who wants to meet up and things like that, it makes that experience so much more available and so much more better because some nurse might have a really good contract. She might love the experience of working as a travel nurse, but it's just so hung up on the fact that she can't meet anybody or or he can't find any friends where they go back to, to staff, even though they really enjoy traveling. They just were missing that, 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 that one piece. And I'm really glad that you guys are doing something about it. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I think the average like lifespan of a traveler is usually three to five years. And it's usually to the point that they're either wanting stability or lacking community. Those are usually the two most common reasons why people um, end up planting roots. And 
I mean, travel nursing has changed both Ryan and I's life in every single way for the better. And I just am hoping with our app that we can help to inspire people to either get into the industry or continue to do it because there's just so many fruits to be like gathered in the industry. So I really hope it does continue to help people um, continue on with travel nursing. Yeah. So if somebody downloads the MetaVenture app, what what kind of, what should what should they kind of expect going into it? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so currently we have five main functions of the app. Um, so basically when you download, you create your profile and then it'll match you up with people in your area within your radius of similar likes and interests. And you can either choose to message them or go to the next person, kind of like a bumble friendship, I would say. Um, the next uh, feature is meetup and events. So you can host a meetup or you can attend a meetup uh, hosted by other travelers or agencies. Um, in the city, which you're taking your assignment. And then there's a discussion board on housing, things to do, food and drink. And then the, there is, finally, there is hospital reviews. So you can review your hospital based on your experience or read other reviews to better prepare you for you know what you're getting into. Um, we also have traveler resources, which are vetted resources to give you a discount based on like taxing or health insurance or you know just general help with your um, contract. Um, and then we are about to launch version two of the app, hopefully next month. And we're introducing some new things, uh, hint at Medventure date. So we'll see how that goes. Medventure date, you said. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh, I already had the kind of, so being on the app and trying to like find people that are local, it kind of had that dating, uh, aspect to it. So you guys are more kind of differentiating it where you can find people to hang out with or intimately looking for mm -hmm. someone, right? Yeah, that was like one of the biggest feedback that we've gotten in this past year is like, you know, there's people who are married or in relationships and they don't want to come off like they're trying to hit on someone. They're like, I'm just trying to find a friend on assignment. So, yeah, we want to be able to better differentiate that so people know like what your intentions are when you're looking to connect with someone. Yeah, and we've had a lot of Medventure date success stories on yeah. the app already. So it's like, let's build it. <laughs> yeah. We can't wait until someone tells us that they got married. <laughs> coming, awesome. coming soon, right? You guys are just launching, so maybe in the next mm -hmm. two, three years, you'll you'll get one of those reviews. Yeah, damn, that, that's that's cool. Like that, that'll feel really good. Like you were responsible for people getting married. You know, that, that's like a that's like a big thing. You know, you better get an invite to the wedding or something. You know. <laughs> For sure. I really like the like the aspect that you, that you guys have where you could review like certain hospitals or, you know, because like we as humans, we go by reviews. And that's like the one thing that that isn't really reviewed, like your work experience or hospitals, because it's almost like I feel like back then it was like it was like kind of like like taboo because all oh, it's healthcare it should be a little personalized. But we live, you know, in, in the in, in year 2021 where everything is, you could say it's all it's all it's all tech now. Right. So we kind of almost rely on other people experiences like for example when i look for restaurants or places to eat i always look at the reviews i always say yeah there might be two two texts two um two places that are serving tacos but this one has six thousand reviews this one has four thousand i'm probably gonna go with the one that has 6k reviews and a five star rating versus the five star rating and a 4k just based off experience and i feel like that, that was missing for hospitals because if i know that i'm gonna work at one hospital and, and i look at the Adventure app and says hey this hospital has one star and has a lot of bad comments i might not not want to go to it because I don't want to be stuck with a shady work environment, especially because like there's like that travel nursing newbies uh, group on Facebook. There's a lot of people that complain about certain hospitals on there, and like some nurses quit after after their first first day. And I would like to know that hey, the the work environment that I'm coming in in this hospital is really bad and toxic, so maybe I probably shouldn't go go with this. I think that that's a missing in travel nurse, and I'm very glad that you guys are doing something about it too, because that's going to definitely play a big role on on where people work in the future for sure. Yeah, and something before sorry before we launched this, we were like expecting to just get a lot of negative hospital reviews, but they're honestly mostly positive hospital reviews. And it was really important for us to keep our users anonymous for retaliation, so they can be anonymous when you're posting a review, um, just to protect our users because we don't want any retaliation from it. Right, I'm such a good that, point. That's important. I wish I knew that too because I don't know if you guys ever worked for Kaiser. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I see those like-minded <laughs> smiles. So I did my first Kaiser contract in San Diego, and I was just a chess piece of the whole hospital. I have I think I've done only a handful of ICU uh, unit shifts there versus floating med surge oncology, you name it. So uh, after that, I don't think I'm ever going to do a Kaiser contract, even though the money is enticing, you know? 
Yeah, I'm right there with you. I did one Kaiser in San Francisco and I floated every four hours for probably 75% of my contract. Um, to like, they told me it was only going to be CVIC to ICU. And I was like, yeah, cool, no problem. Uh, but it was everything to like tele, med surge. I even had to call Code Blue one time and med surge. And I was like, this is my worst nightmare. This is why everyone needs to be on a monitor. <laughs> And nobody knew what they were doing. I was like, oh my God, I'm so stressed out right now. <laughs> Especially as a CVI ICU nurse, because you know how things should be. Like, mm. what's going on? Chaos. Yeah. So I was like, put the bed down, get the cracker. I was just like running the code. I was like, oh my God, nobody knows. Like, I mean, I understand though, because, you know, they barely see codes, but I felt so bad. It was like a new grad nurse. And I, after was like, are you okay? Like, this is your, probably your first patient you've ever lost. It was like traumatic. And I think she was still in shock. <laughs> and I'm sure later on she was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I th yeah, I think that's every ICU nurse is like, the thing when the, when they get floated to like the tele floors or, you know, just the med surge floors or any kind of other floor, it's like the, the thing is that now you have four or five patients and no one's on a monitor. And ICU, everyone's on a monitor and you're always looking at numbers and you know exactly what's going on at every given moment of time. Some anxiety. And I, right, and I get floated to like a different floor and no one's on a monitor and I'm like freaking out because like I wanna be able to observe everything that's going on in every room just in case something were to happen, you know, because people walk free, like an ICU, if somebody walks freely, you're like, first thing is, is like, hey, is he supposed to be up? You know, because no one's ever walking in, in the ICU unless you like happen to have that one patient that just doesn't have a room yet. And I'm always like super like, my heart rate is always elevated when I get floated because I just don't know what's going on. And I like to know everything that's going on. I like to know when your right foot moves off the bed, you know, and, and I can't, and I, and I can't know that. And I'm always stressed out. I'm always like getting behind work and all that just because it's, it's just like, we're super anal and nice to you about what's happening at every single moment of time. Uh, can you guys little talk a little bit about, cause I'm really curious on the process of developing this app. Did you like, like, how did you like start doing this? Did you reach out to some, somebody to help you develop it? Are you developing it with like your own computer? How did you go about that? Really steep learning curve is what I'll just first say um, is like going into tech without having tech experience is really hard. Uh, we've outsourced um, to India, like we've had two different teams work um, on our app and then we've had one contractor. And I think that's honestly been one of the hardest things for us is making sure we find the right team. And I think the biggest thing is that no one will ever care about your project as much as you do. And so for these teams, they, it's just one of their many projects that they're working on. But for us, obviously, it's like our baby. And so um, it's really hard to translate as far as like, oh, we wanted to do this thing. And we think it's so obvious. But for tech and for like developers and stuff, their brain thinks totally different than how we're thinking. And so even learning like their lingo and everything like that has been pretty difficult, but we've been part of two accelerator programs, which has been really helpful to um, get us into like networks of people who are doing startups in tech, and then also to mentors who have been where we are. And then honestly, a lot of Googling also, <laughs> no shame in that, but I think what's been really humbling about entrepreneurship is that we didn't have to go to business school to do this. And we were able to put like a live product into the world. And I think that's one of the most magical things that we've done is like, we had this idea and now it's like a living, breathing thing, which is still like really mind boggling to me. Yeah. How did it feel going from being a nurse, you know, to having to call a doctor to get orders to actually initiate certain protocols to stepping into a, like a very big leadership position where you're actually now giving out the orders and instructions. How, how does it feel and how do you transition to it? And what's like the biggest learning aspect of it that you can't Google? I think for me, it's like, you know, I was a nurse first and the entrepreneur second. So uh, constantly reminding myself that I am overlooking a company. I do have to put my foot down and I do have to do some hard things. I have to let people go. I have to, you know, give more uh, promotions, like talk differently to people. Like, I mean, as a nurse, we're always like wanting to help people, wanting to promote everybody. But as a business entrepreneur, well, we want to do the same thing. Some people aren't in it for the right reasons, like Em said, and some people don't um, love your product as much as you do or trust it. So we've had some hardships with um, some contractors we've um, done that we've had to let go or take advantage of us because we are nurses first and then entrepreneurs second. Um, so we have had those 
problems, but overall it's just switching from the bedside mind frame to entrepreneurial mind frame or business mind is, has been kind of challenging for us. Do you guys feel like, you know, you're, you have four days off, you have like this entrepreneur hat on, you're having all this conversation in your cases, talking to developers in India. And then the next day you have your shift, you got to put on your nurse cap, on your stethoscope and talk completely different. I think that's such a culture shock jumping in between roles, you know? Yeah, honestly, I've been talking about this a lot with Ryan is like mentally, I just feel really exhausted because your brain likes to stick to like one task at a time. And it's like you're switching from so many different um, parts in your brain, whether that's like the creative brain, the leadership brain, like whatever it is. And that can really tax your brain if you don't give it time to like rest and sleep and all that good stuff. Um, but I also do think on the flip side that being a nurse, I think we underestimate how many transferable skills, like soft skills that we have into entrepreneurship. Like one, we're really good at multitasking, like crazy good at multitasking. And then two, I think um, just being able to have that like interprofessional and interpersonal like communication, like that has really helped us with talking to people who like we hire and even like our users. And I do think because we're so good at talking with people, people can feel that we're like really genuine with like the product that we created and like our marketing, like all our captions, like whatever it is, people can tell it's like coming from the heart. So I think those are probably like the coolest things as far as like skills as transferable. But I also think the ambition part is like really hard from uh, one thing that I really struggle with with entrepreneurship is like setting boundaries because it feels like I'm always working because there's always so many tasks to do and it's not like you clock out and you're done. There's always going to be more stuff to do. And so for me, I'm still trying to find like balance and just boundaries as far as like, oh, it's 7 p.m. Like I should probably just like turn off my brain now. But many times I'm working until like 9, 10 o'clock and then trying to sleep when your brain is like still going. So I'm still trying to learn. Yeah, I feel like for nurses, a lot of nurses have a hidden, hidden talent of, of communication. In nursing school, we don't really learn too much about it, but something that you learn on a job, like your your job literally revolves around you speaking to patients. And a lot of time you're trying to figure stuff out because like working in the ICU and working with the critically ill, especially like I've seen here uh, or, you know, or in California, really, really anywhere where you kind of work with people that uh, have substance abuse problems is a lot of times you're they're in the ICU, but you're also trying to figure out their, their, their full story. Like for example, you know, you have a patient that comes in and they're in the ICU because they're like in like acute liver failure and they tell you, Hey, I just overdosed. On, I just took a lot of Tylenol. It's just like, you know, it takes quite a bit of Tylenol for you to go into like, you know, acute liver failure or just have, or have elevated liver enzymes. You gotta take a lot of Tylenol. Like you kind of got to figure out what else were they doing because Tylenol directly isn't always going to cause like, you know, direct, direct liver damage, you know? So then you slowly figure out their story and you, and you, you get better as it with experience and you learn how to talk to people because you meet a lot of people with different dialects, different parts of the, of the city, different parts of the country. And you just know how to communicate with different types of people and you don't really pay attention to and understand it until like you just like start talking to people outside of the hospital because you, I feel like automatically always get along with, with everybody just because you're used to communicating with all different types of types of people. And I feel that's a lot of that's a, that's a, or not a lot of, but I feel that's a big hidden talent for a lot of nurses that they could easily capitalize on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you guys enjoying in your free time to like unwind from nursing, entrepreneurship, and just all this responsibility? Yeah, how do you prevent burnout? Because y'all, you, you know, you work full time as nurses, and then you also work work on the app on your off day. So how do you how do you like find time to relax and not you know have a seizure? <laughs> We're both avid hikers, so I think any day off we have, we're hiking. Um, we also travel a lot. Um, so, and we'll just be like, hey, I need a day off. I'm like, no problem, I got this, or vice versa. Um, so, for me, it's hiking, going to the gym, um, and going to the ocean, since I'm right there. Yeah, and honestly, like, again, like, with free time, there's very, there's a lot less of it. And I think that's been like a really hard transition is like a lot of the free time we have to dedicate to our business. And if like, we don't do it, nobody will, right. You can't really like delegate to anybody else. It's just both of us. Um, but yeah, definitely getting outside is like my happy place. It doesn't even matter if like the sun is out, like I need to like smell the fresh air. I need to just like move my body in whatever way it is. Even if it's like rainy here in Seattle, like I like to go climbing indoors too. It just has to like be moving my body. Yeah. And that's, that's the power of sacrifice. It's, you know, we travel to these different contracts. We want to explore the city and, you know, 
other travelers in the hospital tell us about all these cool places and you're just stuck doing the role of being a nurse, being an entrepreneur, we're recording and it's, mm-hmm. um, it's a fine line, it's, it's a balance ultimately that you have to um, establish and that's hard to do. Right. Yeah, because like you wanna go out like all, all the time, you know, because especially us here in Austin, like- Like those Austin travelers, <laughs> they're partying. Mm-hmm. Like, like that, <laughs> yeah, like, like shit's going down and like, yeah, have fun. I, I'm looking at us right now in, in the camera and I'm like, like me and you look so pale. Like, you know, sun. I'm not to make you self conscious or anything, but I'm looking, I'm looking at myself right now. I'm just like, damn, was I always this, this pale or, or, or white? Day but number that, seven, no we're, sunlight. <laughs> yeah, but I realized that like we, we have so much work on our plate that you know we work in a hospital and we work outside a hospital and we rarely go outside. Like the only time I really get sunlight is if I walk, you know, from the car to the gym and then back. And I just noticed that I'm, like we're so pale. So yeah, it's just it's, life gets super super busy and it only gets busier. But like you gotta take time for yourself sometimes too. And I think I'm realizing I gotta go. Out, I gotta go outside more or something, because <laughs> extra pale, you know. But yeah. What is your current obsession mm-hmm. right now? Besides work. <laughs> yeah. Crypto and crypto and the stocks, but I'm not doing well. So. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the market. The market like flip, but you know. This but, past month, yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, this always happens because like. Every, every year, like I feel like the same thing happens around this time. Market goes down, and then this is wait till like March, April. It's gonna be right back up, and you're gonna be like, "Damn, why the hell did I not buy in more?" It's all like that, that emotion thing, that that fear that you think it's gonna end, it's gonna go down. But like, I I think that you know we're pretty smart individuals, and I, and I feel like if the economy was really crashing hard. I feel like we notice it more around us, right? Like, you know, you don't see like these big companies, you know, failing or, or anything like that or being nervous. And, you know, now you got Facebook that turns to metaverse now, so they're doing it very well. So like, I feel like anything that you invest in tech wise, you know, it might be slow upcoming or might be on a little downturn, but I think you just hold it for the future. You know, anything tech I feel like is very valuable right now. I agree with that. And it's always a cycle. Like there's always gonna be peaks and valleys, so. Right. And especially uh, as dominant as America is as a superpower, uh, their economy is never going to crash, just like people say on social media, whatever. I think that's just like fear, if anything. Mm. So if anything, the society and the culture of America might kind of crumble or take like a bad spin for a little bit. But as like from an economical standpoint, it's not really going anywhere. Mm. Yeah. What about you? And what is your current obsession? Um, I really like personal growth. It's like not as sexy of an answer, but, um, for me, I think that goes like hand in hand with entrepreneurship, just because that's the only way that I can really like manage like the stress, uh, of entrepreneurship is if I like get in check with like my thoughts and emotions and like where they come from. So I like dive pretty deeply with like trying to figure myself out like day in and day out. Nice. And how do you like doing that? Do you meditate or do you journal? Do you just go for those walks that you mentioned? Uh, all the above for sure. Um, I think also like reading and feeding my mind, like certain things, I think we like underestimate how, uh, the things we take in everything from what, what we read and consume, it like gets to our subconscious and then, uh, really affects how we behave, how we think. And so I really try to feed my mind with like certain podcasts that motivate me, especially if I'm feeling like really low, I'm going to try to motivate myself with someone who like inspires me. Yeah, that's amazing. Legit. That's legit. Mm-hmm. Where can people find you guys? So our app is at Medventure app on Instagram and also on Facebook and YouTube. And then you can also obviously download Medventure app. It's free for both iOS and Android users. And then personally, you can find me at Ever Evolving M on Instagram. And I'm uh, traveling RN Ryan. And then you could email us at hello at medventureforTravelers.com if you have any questions for us. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for all listeners. Make sure you guys get the MedVenture app. It's a great time. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you guys. Take care, guys.